this is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, August 31st. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, is the government organization that's tasked with forecasting weather patterns. Its predictions are used by the government to prepare for heat waves or storms and by outlets like the Weather Channel and AccuWeather to report the temperature to you and me. To get a lot of this information, NOAA relies on satellites. And back in 2016, the agency decided to turn to private companies to get more satellite data more cheaply. But six years on, despite a boom in the number of private satellites in space, the government is still waiting for more companies to jump into the weather data market. Joining us to discuss what's behind this stall and how it's impacting the future of weather forecasting is WSJ Pro's enterprise technology reporter, Isabel Bousquet. Hi, Isabel. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Isabel, we hear so much about satellites going up to space these days. So has the U.S. government been able to find that plethora of information that it was hoping for? So the government has found two companies to buy private weather data from. It started piloting these companies kind of right off the bat in 2016. And after four years of testing, officially started purchasing from them in 2020. But beyond those two, there really wasn't the huge variety and plethora of data coming out that they were sort of hoping for and expecting. I think what they found and, you know, a lot of private companies found is just that getting satellites into space is easier and cheaper than it's ever been before, but it's not that easy and it's not that cheap. It's still incredibly difficult and takes a lot of capital. So it hasn't really materialized in the way that they were hoping for. So what position does that leave the government in? I mean, is there a way to kind of get around this? Are they encouraging more companies to to go up? What can they do? I mean, essentially what they can do is just kind of sit and wait for more private companies to enter the market. It's a difficult situation because essentially they can't promise any companies that are in early funding stages or any companies that don't have satellites up there yet. They can't make any promises about data they can or will purchase from those companies. Those companies, it's totally up to them to get off the ground, if you will, and and get up into space and, and start producing good data. But If you're a company that's getting a satellite into space in order to produce weather data, there's not a lot of buyers for that data outside of the government. And so without that government promise, it's sort of unclear how much of a market there's going to be for your data. And so that's why venture capital and, and other investors have been kind of nervous to fund these weather data collecting startups. And so that's kind of why NOAA still just has these two partners. And they started piloting a third this year and they are optimistic. It's just definitely been slower than they were hoping. Okay, so let's talk about the data that they do get from these private sector partners. How is it different or is it different from the data that NOAA was gathering itself? Yeah, absolutely. So it falls into the same category as one type of data that NOAA was gathering itself. So NOAA gathers a few different types of data from satellites that all inform its weather prediction models. And one of those key types is called radio occultation. It's basically a fancy way of saying that you can measure the disturbances in radio waves. And based on those disturbances, you can find out things about temperature and and pressure in the atmosphere. So NOAA's been doing that forever. And now there are these two private companies that are also doing that. The difference basically is that NOAA has a number of satellites out there doing this. They have one constellation called Cosmic 2 that does this, but the private companies are able to essentially fill in gaps that aren't covered by the satellites NOAA covers. So NOAA satellites tend to favor regions of the earth that are closer to the equator and data from the private companies kind of spans the whole gamut, like closer to the poles and that type of thing. So They can definitely help fill in some of those gaps. And for that reason, NOAA thinks that that data is going to be helpful to essentially creating more accurate weather predictions. The U.S. government works with private companies 
all the time for things. It buys information from them. It hires them to help them build, you know, satellites or roads, plenty of other things. So I wonder if in this case, though, given that there's so few partners, if NOAA or if Congress sees this as a project that's working out, turning to the private sector, or if they have to recalculate. From my conversations with NOAA, there's definitely an optimistic bent. Congress has definitely taken note of the fact that NOAA has fewer private sector partners than, you know, one would have hoped at a certain point earlier down the road. And so they thought one problem was that NOAA maybe wasn't soliciting private companies often enough. They were doing it essentially every two years. So when they doled out NOAA's funding for this earlier this year, they recommended that NOAA seek out private companies more often than that. And NOAA's now said they're going to seek out private companies at least once a year, if not more. So Congress hasn't backtracked on the project. Like they definitely still want it to happen and they're still rolling out funding for it. And I think they're just hoping that more entrants are going to come into this market. So what happens next? And I guess for, you know, listeners who are thinking about more severe weather patterns that we've all been experiencing, should we expect that these forecasts will eventually improve? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. With the amount of interest and innovation going into weather data and the private sector, there's definitely a sense of urgency. And, you know, there is, again, enthusiasm from the private sector. This is a problem that people definitely want to solve, but there are definitely challenges. And so it has been slower, but the climate problem isn't going away. The need for better weather forecasts is not going away. So, There's no reason to think that there's not going to be more capital and and more companies funneling into this space and, you know, trying to solve this problem better. All right. That's our reporter, Isabel Busquet. Thanks for joining us, Isabel. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. And if you like our show, please rate and review it. You can do that wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.